together as we sing a song, joyfully here we are, all together as we pray will always be. Join me now as friends to celebrate the brotherhood we share, all as one, keep the fire burning in the liquid care. Good morning and a warm welcome to today's Holy Eucharist. As you had already seen the list, we pray for all those intentions and we pray for all our near and dear ones who are no longer with us but are in need of God's prayers. We especially pray for all those souls who have nobody to pray for that God may continue to show us mercy and grant them eternal rest. Surrendering all our intentions, let us now call on the triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today we commemorate all the faithful departed. We pray for all the souls who are no longer with us. Today is a day of hope for each one of us, that even as we commend these souls into the hands of the Lord through this Eucharistic celebration, God will grant them eternal rest. And we pray that we too, one day as we finish our journey here on earth, that through God's mercy and through the prayers of our near and dear ones, we may also obtain eternal rest. With that hope, let us now participate and humbly acknowledge the many sins and failures and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. And as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. On that day, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, 
the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people. He will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Our response will be, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, he revives my soul. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. The Lord, Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. The Lord, Lord is my is shepherd, my shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell, for length of days unending. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that everyone who believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Praise the Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 11, verses 21 to 27. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, the Mother Church teaches us that if a person dies, he will be in one of the three places. A person who is in a perfect state of holiness will be in heaven. A person who is in mortal sin and even as he died in mortal sin he is condemned by his own choice and will be in hell and the third place is this place called purgatory where a person is in a state of grace and God's friendship but not yet fully purified the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1030, 1031 and 32, clarifies this, that a person who is in a state of grace and friendship but imperfectly purified is assured of his eternal salvation but he has to go through a process of purification. And that place is called purgatory. And to substantiate it, we have two verses, one in the Old Testament, in the second book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verses 42, wherein Judas Maccabeus made atonement for the dead, so that these Jewish soldiers who were dead might be delivered from their sins. And in the New Testament, we read the Lord himself telling, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 32, that the sin against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven in this age and in the age to come. It implies that some sins can be forgiven in this age and some sins in the age to come. And that place is called purgatory, my dear brothers and sisters. And that is our sincere effort as well as the mother teaches, as the mother church teaches us that we need to offer prayers, especially we need to offer masses so that they attain that beatification, beatific vision wherein the Lord is united with them and they are united with the Lord. In the first reading, we heard about this assurance that God is giving us through prophet Isaiah that he is preparing a banquet for each one of us. We believe that he has created us and we are his beloved children. And though we miss our near and dear ones who are no longer with us, we believe that God is a merciful God who will continue to show mercy and receive them into the eternal rest. And as prophet Isaiah assures us, there will be no more tears. We will be united with our near 
and dear ones. My dear sisters and brothers, in the gospel today, the Lord says to Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. Even as he had conquered sin and death, and he has won new life for us, so is our hope today that even as we pray for our departed members, that they too will be one with God, that they too will conquer all their imperfect state and receive God's mercy. And they will be in a perfect state of holiness so that they will be one with him. The Mother Church also teaches us that along with offering masses, we need to make acts of charity, do penance and other almsgiving on behalf of these dead people are near and dear ones so that they continue to receive God's mercy. So we pray during this Holy Eucharistic celebration that God who is the source of life and in the person of Jesus who conquered death and has won new life for us and he assures us today that our people will be there with God in accordance with his holy will let that be a hope and prayer as well that all those souls who are struggling to reach heaven may continue to experience God's mercy and be there. And even as we are praying for them, that is our hope that when we finish our journey here on earth, our near and dear ones and even our people will pray for us that we may united you may be united with God. Let that be our hope and prayer. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Ah uh -huh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and Alphonsus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Asking God to be merciful to our departed near and dear ones, and at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that, you that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but only say, say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Prayer for the end of the pandemic. Almighty and merciful Father, we show your love to all your creation. We come before you asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the virus in various parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead, and consolation to the bereaved families. Protect doctors, nurses, and others serving the sick. We pray that an effective medicine and vaccine to combat the sickness be speedily found. 
We pray for all governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, thank you for joining us in celebrating this Holy Eucharist on the special day when we pray and remember all our beloved ones who have gone ahead of us for their dear souls that God may grant them eternal life. As you might have noted at the beginning of the Holy Eucharist today, because the list of Mass intentions were so long, we refrained from reading it out, but only displayed it so that we may all remember and pray for them. But I want to assure you, for each of you who have offered a Mass for the intentions, each intention will be prayed at a particular Mass and all your intentions will be offered. Also a reminder that the Church also announces plenary indulgence from the 1st to the 8th of November by visiting the cemetery and praying for the beloved ones. Plenary indulgence is for the forgiveness of sins for ourselves and also for those who have gone ahead so that God may purify them and welcome them into God's presence. This is another way that we express that we are a church that is on a journey, which means as much as we are part of the church, we have a church that is in the process of purification and we have communion of saints that is the church that is already purified. We are one communion in the same one Lord. This evening, join us for Who's Who in the Bible, Praying with Biblical Characters. And the topic for today is Prophet Samuel, presented by Father Lawrence. So do join us to learn a little more about Prophet Samuel. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you. For in his unfathomable goodness, he created the human race. And in the resurrection of his only begotten son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Great indeed are your works, O Lord, now and ever more. Great indeed are your works. Night